Here we have a MacBook with liquid damage that's not powering on. This is an A1502 MacBook. Let's figure out why it's not powering on and see if we can make it work again. No green light in the charge. First thing we need in order to get a green light is PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. But we get PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. Let's see what the one wire circuit looks like. These two chips look happy. Let's see if our SMC is turning on. What is our SMC reset signal showing us? SMC reset is 3.4 volts. Now let's see if the it's actually turning on. 12.26. All right, so it does appear that our SMC is not turning on. Because if the SMC was turning on, then I'd have 12.55 volts, not 12.23. We have corrosion around here, but that corrosion is actually in areas that are inconsequential to me. So I am going to re-hot SMC. Bro, I'm actually rendering a video right now where I used Jess's advice and re-hotted a PMIC and it worked. Hey, and the other shit with postal insurance is like, okay, post proof of value. You know, you have to send a receipt of the value. Okay. So now I have to ask the customer who's sending me a five-year-old MacBook to send me a fucking receipt of purchase. Like, it's almost like they, it, it, it's not designed for you to ever use it. It's designed for you to be aggravating enough that you don't. And it works. Mark says, can't help my dad was from Italy. My mother was from Italy, too. My mom is from San Bernadetto del Paris. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. I am such a fake Italian. And, of course, knowing every word to Time to Say Goodbye by Andrea Bocelli. Because all of those really, really hardcore Roman Catholics that are like devout followers of the Roman Catholic religion. They all look up to this dude that regularly fucks a woman half his age instead of being loyal to his wife, but who won't divorce his wife because he's a Catholic and not allowed to. Ah, oh, lull. I always remember asking my grandma that. Does she really believe that, you know, if you move out of the house, before you're married, you're a slut and you're irredeemable. So you have to get married. Even if you're 30 years old, you, you cannot move out from the house. You can't move out of the house because that makes you a slut. And, uh, you, and I get some aspect of it. You know, you want to keep people from having kids with people that they're not going to stay with and keep the world from becoming a pile of shit once everybody starts, you know, becoming complete and utter degenerates, you know. It's like, it's not one step. It's one thing leads to another, leads to another, and then you have magazines like Vice and people writing articles about masturbating during childbirth. And, but the, the, I would always ask her, you know, okay, I understand that you have this value system and I can respect it. Why do you look up to a guy that fucks somebody who's not his wife? Because she's hot and half his age. And not even that, it's wasted on him. It's totally wasted on him. Maybe I'm just being jealous of Andrea Bocelli. Like, you're blind! Leave the women half your age to people who can see! I guess you can still feel everything and everything, but it's not the same. I have to change nozzles here. Let's get a thicker nozzle. Time to reflow. Little Johnny Apple Flux. I know, Tim, I can never use that damn thing right. I always wind up like, scratching my arm against the side of the desk. 
that I push too hard and the thing comes off. I can remove the nozzle easily, I can't put the new one on easily. Damn it, I left some of that crap there. And I also knocked a cap off. Look, I've destroyed another micro pencil tip. Another 45 bucks. Oh well. I get good mileage out of them. I make some money from them every now and then. Sit down, sit down. All right, now I'm gonna come back in just one minute, and when I come back, this, after this board is cooled off, we're just gonna put it under the rapid cool technology here. Rapid cool technology, once I'm back, it'll be ready. Rapid cool technology. Rapid cool done. Rapid cool complete. There's a light on the charger now. Look at that, a light in the charger. We get a light in the charger and we get a fan spin. So this board wasn't working because the SMC must have gotten some sort of corrosion on it, which is particularly interesting since all of the corrosion on this board was on the opposite side of the board from the SMC. There was no visible corrosion around the SMC. I determined that the SMC was not working because the SMC is what is going to speak to the charger. So I can show you that on the schematic right here. This over here is going to be the charge port. We have three lines, 18 volts, ground, and adapter sense. Adapter sense is gonna be what's responsible for allowing the machine to notice the adapter is there, and then once computer, the SMC, also known as Senpai, notices the charger, also known as me, the computer will be happy, the charger will be happy, and you'll get a green light. Here, the computer was not able to notice the charger, because this entire system was speaking, allowing to, the charger to speak to the SMC, but the SMC wasn't listening. So here, you need to have 3.3 volts going into this chip. The ISL6259 seems to be sending the SMC BCACOK -OK signal so that this chip will send 3.3 volts to this chip. Once 3.4 volts is present on this chip, this will allow the adapter send signal from the charger to talk to the system management controller via the SIS1 wire line. Because as you can see here, SIS1 wire is going to go straight to the SMC. This here is the SMC chip. Now, how do I know if the SMC is working or not? Well, that's a great question, and I'm glad that you asked. There's another chip on this board called U7100, and this chip has a bi-directional data line with the system management controller. This chip that has that bi-directional data line with the system management controller is U7100. U7100 is going to be the chip that creates a rail called Pepebus G3 Hot. Now, our Pepebus G3 Hot is not going to be the proper voltage unless the SMC talks to U7100. And this is something that we just learned over time. It's just pattern recognition. So when the SMC is working and we have a light, we typically have 12.56 volts on Pepebus G3 Hot. When the SMC is not working and we don't have a green light, we typically have 12.23 volts in Pepebus G3 hot. This allowed me to see that the SMC was not working, so I didn't bother going after the one-wire circuit that was doing its job. I bothered going after the chip that's supposed to be listening to the one-wire circuit, which is the SMC. So it could be either not being told to turn on, 
but it was because as can be seen here, we did take a look at U51 something, a U5110, and the SMC reset signal was present. So the SMC was being told to turn on. At that point, it could be either a bad SMC or corrosion under the SMC. We simply rehotted SMC bro, and after rehot SMC bro, it worked. And again, this was a chip that does not have underfill. But you saw that it did have a little bit of edge bonding that snuck its way under the chip. And even though that was the case, it still worked. So I want you to think about all those times that Jesse Jones <laughs> At iPad Rehab, it said you cannot underfill, you cannot rehot an underfilled PMIC, or you cannot rehot a CPU that's underfilled because it won't work. And just think about it. Is she really looking out for your best interest? Does she really want to teach you phone repair? Or is she just trying to keep all those easy rehot PMIC and rehot CPU jobs for herself? Don't delay. Question Jessa today. But that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Do you have a MacBook that needs to be fixed? Come by our store, which is open to the public at 186 First Avenue in Manhattan. Are you located outside of New York? No problem. Send us a machine from anywhere in the world by going to our website and clicking on the mailbox or simply heading over to sendyourmacbook.com. That's sendyourmacbook.com where you'll be redirected to our mail-in instructions page that includes the form and the directions on how to send us a MacBook for repair. We have a live chat where you can speak with us about the repair that you need, a phone number where a representative will pick up during our open hours, and a contact form where you can contact us about repairs.